This is the world we knew. Where traveling used to be like this. So much of everything. Too much of everything. Это не то, что мы хотим. Queremos un mundo donde viajar sea divertido, pero también respetuoso. To just and be all with us. Nous voulons un monde où le tourisme est accessible. Courtos. En nuestro mundo, el turismo nos da esperanza, belleza y paz. В нашем мире туризм устойчив и ответственен. Мы ожидаем Hello, fellow GYTSers. Hello, I am uh, sorry I'm not here with you live. I am now in Yerevan, uh, Armenia, where we came for an inspection visit for another summit that we're doing uh, slightly before ours in Sorrento. Actually, I had a chance to meet Arek, and uh, I hope you uh, had a chance to see that. Uh, we are uh, at the moment in a place, beautiful place here in Yerevan called Vermissage, and it's a, a market. And this is the main, one of the main squares. It's a fantastic day. We are leaving back uh, tomorrow, but uh, I would like to, from here, wish you a great webinar. This is our fifth webinar. Today is May 5, and uh, we are really looking forward for what we're building today. We are joined by uh, one of our great partners, which is Meta, and our dear friend, uh, Dave Summer. Uh, Dave, thank you very much for being with us today. I think this is very precious. Uh, social media platforms uh, mean a lot in our everyday life, but it's important that we know how to use it well, and they can be an incredible tool for your voices to be heard. So today, please enjoy Dave's presence because it's like a small treasure that you need to cherish and keep and maybe definitely inspire you for uh, your future uh, ideas that you will bring over to Sorrento. Make sure that you continue following us and interacting with us at, at Youth Tourism Summit in Instagram and our Facebook page. Uh, for now, I just wish you a fantastic, fantastic webinar. And uh, remember, I stand for sustainable tourism. 
Thank you very much. Bye bye. Hi, everybody. So Alessandra already gave a wonderful introduction, <laughs> introduction, sorry, for Dave. And um, so you're gonna get a very special opportunity today to uh, hear about uh, kind of how to make your voices heard, how to use the tools that you have at your disposal. Social media is part of our everyday life, as Alessandra said, and well, Dave is gonna give us some very interesting hacks to use it well. Uh, Azer? Hello. Whoa, got a bit of an echo. Try again, Azer. Okay. Is it better now? Yes. Yes, much better. Okay. Okay. Thank God. I scared myself there. Um, I'm sorry for the, I had some connection problems. Um, as And I believe we already played the video of Alessandra, correct? Yes. Okay, great. So, and as far as I heard, you gave, you introduced a, introduced Dave? Yes, I did, but if you want to can. <laughs> yes, so, yeah, once again, of course. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, sorry for being late. And we are happy to uh, give the floor to Dave Summer. Uh, from Meta, who will be talking to us about his experience and his uh, knowledge on uh, the role of uh, social media as an advocacy tool. So, Dave, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, and we really appreciate all your support and help. Oh, of course. Thank you so much, Azar and Masha, for the introduction, and Alessandra, who's not here. Um, it is it is wonderful to be here. Can you hear me okay? Can you see me okay? Yes, we can. Excellent. I have obviously, I have some slides prepared, as one does, but uh, uh, I just wanted to say hi and thank you. And we are really, really grateful at Meta, and especially uh, at Instagram, which I represent, uh, to be working with the, the UN uh, WTO and GYTS. Uh, in everything that we've been doing the past little while, and especially in the run-up to the summit. So, without further ado, I think uh, it's time to share my screen, yeah? Let's figure out if I still remember how to do this. Okay, we're gonna do that. And then, so you should see just green right now. And then, tell me if you see the sort of uh, the intro slide, you see that? Yes, we do. All righty. All right. So uh, just by way of a little bit of an introduction about myself, uh, you know, my name is Dave Summer. I work on the politics and government team uh, at Instagram and my build is not building. There it is. And uh, I'm based in Washington, D.C. I've uh, I've been here about three years. And, you know, like I said, we work with the UNWTO. We work with uh, the Youth Tourism Summit now for the past few months. Uh, you know, our job is basically to help you guys get the most out of Instagram when it comes to promoting tourism, a return to tourism around the world, as we've been uh, as we've been saying, as we start to move on from the COVID pandemic. Last year, we collaborated on, oh, I see the thing is disappearing. I get it now. So last year, we collaborated on a guide called Recover and Rediscover. Um, you can find it at that website. It's full of tips on how tourism ministries, cities, and small businesses could better promote tourism recovery, especially in a safe uh, and sustainable way. So we'll go back to that a little bit at the end. Um, just by way of background about myself, um, I've been at Instagram three years in DC. I'm originally Canadian from Montreal. Uh, before this, I was the Deputy Communications Director for Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, specifically in charge of his social media and video. So I got to learn a lot about social media, especially when it comes to storytelling, making your voice heard. And I hope this presentation can give you a little bit of insight in some of the best ways to use IG for making your voice heard, for activism, for basically, you know, for using IG in your own life as well, right? So understanding what goes into making a good story far, far beyond like, what is the best format to use? What is the best time to post? All of that questions. Before we get into all of that stuff, I wanted to start with some of the new features that uh, have rolled out in the past few months at Instagram, just so um, you're up to date on kind of some of the latest things that we are really high on, really big on. Um, when it comes to increasing uh, increasing engagement, when it comes to sort of creating engaging stories. The first tool that I wanted to talk about is Collabs. I absolutely love the Collabs tool. 
Um, if you haven't used it yet, I highly, highly, highly encourage all of you to use it, not just in your personal life, but in your activism as well. This is where you, instead of just tagging someone on the post, you choose to collaborate with them. You invite collaborator to your post. It's in the same area as where you tag them. And this allows your post to be shared between two accounts and you each get your own sort of engagement on it. And obviously what this does is, is if, you're, if you're collaborating with someone whose followers don't really know you, then that's a way to get their followers to know you. So we really love the Collabs tool. We're seeing a lot of high profile people using it all around the world now. And we really think it's a, it's a, it's a really cool and interesting way to, uh, to grow your account a little bit. Another tool that we found that has taken off um, like nothing we ever really thought was the Add Your sticker. Now you can see that at the top of your sticker tray. I think people love participating in Add Yours challenges, in the Add Yours kind of uh, vibe that you get when someone posts that sticker on their story. And uh, we'll have like a little sort of caption or a little challenge like, what are you doing now? Where are you? Where am I today? What, what am I eating right now? Right. And that allows people with one tap to build on that story and add their own. And if the, you know, if your account's public, people can see your story that way. If it's not, only your followers can see you. I think it's a really cool tool that's uh, that's quite versatile. Another reminder, uh, the link sticker is now live. So it used to be you needed to be verified or have a certain amount of followers uh, for the link sticker to work. Now everyone has access to the link. So instead of swipe up in stories like uh, select accounts used to have, now we have anyone uh, with the ability to put a link there. And one more new feature I wanted to tell you about before we get into storytelling is, of course, the caption sticker. So when you've got a video on your stories and you post that video or you're getting ready to post that video, the caption sticker will be there. Uh, we highly encourage everyone to use it. You know, once you tap that caption sticker, you have automatically transcribed captions that go on your story. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about accessibility in the next slide. Uh, but don't forget that a lot of people are watching without the sound on. And the caption sticker is there for you. It's actually pretty accurate, and you can also edit any mistakes. And as you may have seen, it bleeps out swearing automatically, at least in English. So let's talk a little bit about what is good content, especially uh, when you're telling stories on Instagram. And as we know, good can be subjective, right? Good content is personable, relatable. But the first thing you want to think about, the first, second, and last thing you want to think about when you're presenting on IG or when you're when you're using IG in your activism is authenticity. Right, we'll talk a little bit more about this later on, but more than anything, are you speaking in a voice that's natural to you, that's recognizably human? You know, even uh, no matter what cause your account is supporting, you wanna try to create content that's relatable and that people understand, right? Like think about accounts that you like looking at in your own personal life, on your own personal Instagram. What do they do right? And how do you keep creating a conversational and personable tone as much as possible? When I was in Prime Minister Trudeau's office, we knew that he was the prime minister of a country, so we were going to have to talk politics, we were going to have to talk legislation and all the rest. But at the same time, we also knew that content that was like about his family, about his weekend, did he go hiking over the weekend, was always, 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 without exception, going to do a lot better than any of the official stuff. Or even if you're talking about the official stuff that you have to do in light of the work that you're doing. We often found that just a simple sentence spoken normally is always, always, always gonna do better than some official reading along press release, even if it's packed with all the information you wanna convey. Remember what your audience wants to see on Instagram. As we talked about accessibility, remember people are watching without the sound, uh, wanna make sure that your uh, content is as, um, is as accessible to people with disabilities as possible. And we have uh, tips and uh, tricks on how to do that and in our accessibility guide, which is available at our website, which I'll tell you about at the end of the presentation. Be sure to diversify your content. We'll talk about this. Share your videos, uh, share reels, publish guides, which we'll talk about. Remember, mixing up content is a good thing. It's really, really important to try to catch people at all different parts of Instagram. Post consistently, obviously, don't let your account go dark too much. And two things that affect me in the political world uh, a lot and are gonna affect you as well in the, in the activism world, be careful to avoid podiumitis. And you know exactly what this is. You're at an event with a lot of official people and they're all making speeches at a podium and we all fall into the trap of going, better post this, it's officials at a podium. I promise you from the bottom of my heart, no one cares, right? Try to find a way to tell the story differently of the important work you're doing at that event without a faraway picture of, of some official standing there. It's what we've discovered. It's, it's just not, it's not as engaging as it could be. So always be challenging yourself to take the content that you have and breaking it up using the tools of Instagram uh, to make it a little bit more engaging. And on the same note, the fake behind the scenes. We see that all the time. So instead of just a picture of someone, 
it's a picture of someone, but then like you also see like some lights from the camera and like the camera and the camera person there. And what I always find, this is not my opinion, what I always find is that content performs at a far, far lower level and something that's a little more up close and a little more authentic. If you're there, if you're shooting, if you're doing something, show me something interesting and different as opposed to the same thing, just from a different angle. So let's get a little bit more into engaging your audience on Instagram. And I use this account as an example every single time because it's such a great example of an account that really should be boring. It's the TSA in the United States. They're the airport security agency, basically, the Transport, uh, Transport Security Administration, uh, Safety Administration. And what they do, their job is to you know, check your luggage at the airport and so forth. But their Instagram account is so engaging and so interesting because they know specifically that people are expecting them to be boring, but they talk in a normal tone of voice. They use humor, as you see, and they get creative in the middle. They use a lot of memes, but not overboard, right? They use memes that are appropriate to their, to their account. And they interact with people in the comments. Little things like that, that help an account that should be, by all means, a boring, dry, official account, have a million followers. So whatever is going to be important to you, whatever you're going to care about, remember to keep that sort of natural focus and tone of voice. Another account that I love talking about, smaller account, Scottish Parliament. Uh, when we talk about stories, remember that you're telling a story. You're not just putting up a picture from the day or reciting some fun facts or marking an opinion. What you want to do is as much as possible, take your viewers, take your audience on a lesson, with a, on a journey, excuse me, with a beginning, a middle, and an end. So here, for example, this was the 20th anniversary of the Scottish Parliament one day, and we've got the beginning, I recorded the, the middle shots, and then you have the end. So it doesn't have to be fancy. That You can see it's just done on a phone, pretty basic graphics, but they're using sliders, they're using GIFs, they're using hashtags, they're using location tags. They're sharing someone's feed post into their story and tagging them. Really, really simple stuff that is one bajillion percent of the time always going to do better than a really, really elaborately produced video, for example, of someone giving a speech. So always remember these tips and tricks as much as possible in your activism to uh, you know, speak authentically, break up the content, and take people on a journey. A couple other reminders. Uh, in terms of uh, knowing your surfaces, right? So we talked about feed and stories. Don't forget about direct. Like, are you in, who's in your DMs? Do you want people in your DMs? Is this a great way to interact with your audience or would you rather ignore it? And use your highlights, right? So your highlights, which uh, line up at the top of your profile can help people who are coming to your profile get a better sense of who you are and what you've stood for in the past and are a great way to organize your activism as well. Finally, don't forget Reels and guides and of course video. We're gonna take a little bit of a closer look at reels and guides shortly. You may have heard that Instagram is moving towards sort of like a unified video experience where uh, you, know, you open the app and it's gonna be vertical and you're gonna see video. Whether it's reels or video is not gonna make a difference in the future. Our, our head of Instagram just announced this yesterday as a, fact, as a matter of fact that we're testing this. So make sure that you're optimizing your content for a full screen experience, whether it's a photo or a video. The future of Instagram is, is obviously very, very vertical, um, as we know. Before we get to uh, our uh, Q&A and game, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit more about guides because for tourism, guides is so, so, so important, um, especially when you're promoting places or other posts. So when you build a guide on Instagram, it's a really cool way to sort of like, think of it as like making like an, an old fashioned blog post or even like a magazine in one cool post that you can share on IG combined of all kinds of different posts. I really, really encourage you guys to try building guides. Uh, there's three different kinds you can make, places, posts, and products. Products, a little bit less relevant to your experience right now. Places, of course, is absolutely tailor-made for the tourism space. So if you look at the government of Australia's uh, Instagram account at Australia, you know, they build cool guides on interesting places in Australia. And it's real, real simple. You build them from existing posts, and then you group them together into like the super visually appealing kind of thing. So I really, really like the guides feature and hope you make good use of it. And of course, uh, don't forget Reels. Reels is a really popular and fast growing part of, of our platform right now, right? Like we are, we are moving towards making Reels uh, a really, really good part of our platform. And it's just such an effective way to tell your story in short video format, 15, 30, 60 seconds, maybe more. Um, and it doesn't have to necessarily be like super serious or super whimsical. As I always, always say in politics, no one is expecting a politician to get up there and do the dances, right? But there are ways to, to convey the information that you're trying to do um, you know, as effectively as possible 
So we've got two, two separate examples here. So one, you have a really serious example that I'm gonna play about our planet in crisis, and then something from the Sacramento Fire Department in the United States. Okay, can you increase the volume a little bit? Yeah. The main reasons that access to clean water on the Navajo Nation is so difficult is because a lot of the groundwater has been contaminated by abandoned uranium mines. Higher levels of uranium in someone's system can lead to cancer and other serious health effects. Households on the reservation may travel up to 50 miles in order to get access to clean drinking water. To this day, my family and I still can't drink the tap water at our grandmother's home. This lack of access to clean running water on the Navajo Nation is historically rooted in discrimination against indigenous people and tribes, and it is part of a system that consistently prioritizes corporations over indigenous people. To learn more and to support an amazing organization that has consistently done amazing work on the Navajo Nation, visit NavajoWaterProject.org or at Zip Deep Water. So think about that real for a second. Extremely serious, really, really important topic. And it's just a person talking with a little bit of footage. It does not have to be the most spectacular thing you've ever seen. And it does not have to be written in a super official way. It's just a person expressing herself in her own voice. And it's super, super effective. Now, on a little bit of a lighter note. <laughs> So it's a little, you know, a little firehouse fun from Sacramento, California, but now you can see what the two things have in common, right? These are official sources or, or people talking about really serious public issues, you know, fire safety, for example, or a planet in crisis and drinking water uh, on Navajo land, but you're using reels to get your message across in a short and snappy and informal way that people will click on and people relate to because people enjoy consuming this kind of content. So those are some quick, hot tips. I don't know if they were hacks, as Masha said, but you know, just ways to, to use Instagram to communicate a little bit better, a little bit more directly in a little bit more of a light and relatable way to get your message across and to increase your engagement. I am very excited to take questions before we get to the next phase. Thank you very much, Dave. Very interesting presentation. Uh, I'm feeling very motivated to start using posting on Instagram right now. Because all the new, new information I learned. So yeah. Um, I would like to ask everyone uh, who has question, please use the uh, raise hand function of uh, Zoom. And uh, feel free to ask your questions. We, we have an, uh, an expert from Instagram who, uh, who is giving us the secrets of how to use Instagram, how, how to do it in a very good way. So please use this chance. This is your opportunity. Yes, your opportunity, and feel free to uh, ask your you know, question. You know what they say, there's no experts in social media, just people with a lot of practice, right? Because especially Instagram is changing all the time. You know, since the pandemic started, um, the platform has changed so much, you know, especially optimizing for the fact that people were staying at home. So it's just about practice, practice, practice. Thank you. And another good advice for us uh, to keep to keep practicing and to keep posting. Um, I see Melina who raised her hand. Please, Melina, go ahead. Hi. So I had a little question about what you can post and everything. So as a professional, what how do you sort out how what you're going to post and what you're going to leave? like in order to attract the right people and um, get attention drawn to you? It's a good question. I mean, you know, how do we sort out what we're going to post? For example, in my old job, we, you know, we would know the prime minister's schedule, for example, about a week in advance, right? So it's always good to have a sort of idea of what you're going to do a week or two in advance and then think, okay, here's what the content is going to look like. Here's what the messaging we want to put out is going to look like. And then here's how we think, you know, here's how we think it'll, this will work on, for example, Instagram, for example, on Facebook, on Twitter, on, a, you know, on other apps, like 
how are we going to get this message across? But like planning, 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 but also once you've planned, be ready to improvise a little bit. Is there a nice moment that has happened? Do you have a different way to tell the story? And then can you break it up and be like, this will be good on stories. This will be good on feed. This will be a cool reel. You know, this is just a tweet, for example. So like, that's the kind of thing that comes with a little bit of experience and then seeing, checking your insights also on IG to understand what people like and, and then like following up and understanding, okay, I, if I post this as a video, as a reel, as a graphic, it'll be better on this platform and so forth. So really like practice in planning and leaving room for a little bit of improvisation, I think is, is, is the way to go. Okay. Um, thank you so much for the clarification. Thank you, Melina, for your question. Before we get another hand, can I ask a question? Use this opportunity. <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay, how about I ask a question? One question and then you guys follow. Because trust me, I had talked to Dave before and I bugged him with questions for one hour. I drove him crazy. So use this opportunity. I promise it's very, very helpful. Um, so when you have a very serious Instagram account, for instance, a political or so on, how um, is it okay to post maybe something jokes and once in a while, or should it be once a week or once a month? So what's the timeline of kind of throwing in a joke here and there? That's a, that's a great question. And I think the, certainly the difficult part when you're managing a serious account is that events in the news will always kind of overshadow, like if you're a news, you know, if you're a political account, events that happen in the world or in your country will always try to overshadow, will always overshadow what you're trying to do sometimes. And so it's the eternal debate on social. Can we be light and fun while also attending to the business of state, for example? So it's never easy. There's always something that's going to happen in the world. So you have to decide, like, this comes back to what we're talking about in terms of authenticity. Like, what is the voice on the account? And is a joke going to sound really weird and out of place because no one's expecting to see a joke from this politician? Or have we established a voice on this account that's a little bit more relaxed, that's a little bit more able to get away with this? People say, what about memes? I'm like, look, memes are great, but if your account's never done them and then you're all of a sudden, you know, trying to, trying to, you know, uh, catch on to a current meme and post one it can always look like a bit cringy like you're like you're a bit you know trying to be cool but at the same time if you do it correctly if you're able to you know speak in a tone that's natural for your account and and speak to a trend then yes so that's a long answer to the short answer which is really just saying it depends and it depends on what the tone of your account is but of course it can always do well especially you know like some politicians they do really well at showing their home life and there was one the other day who was like baking buns and was like, ah, I burnt all these buns and there's no Instagram filter that can hide this, ha ha ha, right? Like it was perfect. It wasn't, it wasn't too jokey jokey. It wasn't too unserious. It was just a politician at home. And I always say like, when, for example, you're running an account for an official person, no one wants to see an account of someone making announcements and being official. They just want to see a person who happens to have a job that they do as well. Thank you so much for this amazing answer. Ah, we have a question. I'll, I'll give the floor. R Rua, the floor is yours. Okay, well, I'm going to ask a bit quickly, how effective is using social media to spread our message? How, how much time does it have to take for it to take effect? Or how many followers? Because I don't seem to find a lot of accounts that are that successful that you know are also connected to climate change and all of these topics you know yeah yeah that's, look that's a great question and it's i think it's a it's a realistic one to say all right look people have their attention divided all over the place and maybe when they go on social media they're going to relax and have fun and they don't want to hear about you know the imminent end of the world or, or something like that serious at the same time, social media has enabled what didn't used to be possible, right? You starting an account or spreading your message in a way that would never, ever have been allowed or talked about, uh, you know, in the days where there were three television channels and one newspaper per city, and that was that, right? So, which I'm old enough to remember. But, uh, you know, like, so now you have this channel that is there, and the more you keep building on it and the more you keep working on it, you're going to see results, even if that just means you know, not having a huge follower account, like you said, 
but building a small community of passionate followers, right? Who are there for you and who are there to help you get your message across and network with you and build connections that can help you go on to bigger things in the climate change world as you get older. So it's, I know that that dilemma often, right? Like, you know, you post a post, you're like, oh, I worked so hard on this and no, nobody clicked on it. Or like, why am I not getting new followers? At the same time, the more you focus on your mission and your passion and creating engaging content, the more your own people are going to like it and engage with it. And then slowly but surely you grow and grow and grow. And you, maybe you have a post that breaks viral and, and there you go. Okay, that, that is a bit interesting, but you know, if we want to like make a change, it has to be like a lot because in order to like break into corruption, like separate it and maybe fix it, it's going to take a lot of efforts, you know, it's going to take more than five accounts. I'm like asking, what's our expectations here? Like, what are we trying to achieve with social media? Like what type of percentage that we're going for to actually make a change? Yeah, I mean, look, I wish I, I wish I had a number for you, right? Like, I wish I had a magic wand and say, like, as soon as you have this many followers, you know, people are going to start paying attention, right? And sometimes what, what we see all the time is when social media is, is done well and done right, then you'll have, like, the mainstream media will pick up on it and go, oh, here's a story that broke on, on one of the platforms, and then they pick up on it, and then you get your change going, right? So it's like you have your account, and then do you have a communication strategy around that account? You know, it's tough, right? Like, it's tough to, yeah, it to, to make your voice heard. I mean, I really hope we can make a change because, you know, I've seen a lot of videos from Vice. They're, they really like documenting government corruptions with oil and climate change. And I'm like, OK, well, this is big, but are we like good enough to make a change to these really big issues? So it's really interesting that we're actually like giving it a try instead of being silent. But I appreciate it. I appreciate all of your work. Thank you no, a lot. Keep trying. Keep trying. It's a good question. And I really like I hear I hear where you're coming from. Trust me, 100 percent. Thank you, Rua. Thank you very much for Thanks. your question. Um, I see Mohammed has his hand raised. Please, Mohammed, the floor is yours. We cannot hear you. I think you're on mute. Oh. You are on mute, maybe. Oh, he's trying to fix it. Okay, we will wait for now. Until Muhammad comes back, I want to ask maybe Caridad because I know for, she has talked to me about this that she's very She's uh, she's an activist and she's involved in many um, things. Karida, how often do you use social media to kind of showcase what you are doing and kind of is it your platform or do you maybe have questions for Dave to maybe how to better expose yourself and show all the great work you are doing? Yeah, thank you so much for, for taking me into account. And uh, my social media sometimes is a bit um, off. So it uh, depends on the time and the things I'm doing. But mostly when I travel for to do some activism, like recently I went to a general assembly of uh, the National Student Association of uh, Students that Study Education. <laughs> like it's my case. Um, and I really posted everything we were doing or if I am um, in these amazing webinars of the UNATO and the Claudius uh, Theresa Summit, I sometimes and very often um, post it and show it to my friends and my colleagues from other organizations. So I really use it very, very often. Um, but I wish I could have more impact because I think people just see my stories as my content, like uh, just something that Kari posted, not as something that interests them. Uh, they don't go to the link I post or they don't go really deep into the information I'm giving. So maybe, um, you know, my page must be reconsidered in the way I'm using it. But then in the accounts I have for all the organizations I work with, um uh, people really really use them as a channel of information and i think that's uh something important to have in account 
um, when we have um, um, an account where we show the work we do, because um, people really, really get them as an information channel. Um, so, so yeah, I hope that <laughs> answer kind of uh, everything. So it's a great answer. And I always say as well, you know, um, two things. One is that people only have in general one click to give on your post, right? So what do you want them to do, especially on stories, right? Like what is the goal of stories? Is it to get them to click off to your website? Is that the most effective use of your time? Or can you, for example, create a story of like three to five slides on IG stories that conveys the information you want, maybe asks a question or poses a quiz. And so you're building engagement that way on platform. One thing I also always notice is um, we tend to, in this world, create extremely complicated infographics because we want to convey all this information. We have a really cool graphic design or we are a graphic designer and there's something really, really cool we want to show and talk about. Whereas in general on social media, not just on IG, people respond better to sort of like simple graphics with like one big bold sentence and then go from there. So if you're talking, Carrie, about like, you know, making the most efficient use of your time, depending on the account you're running, those are two things to, to remember. Yeah, thank you so much. And I think it's uh, really important. I sometimes tend to to create some Canva um, infographics and then I realize that it wasn't really necessary that sometimes just with the Instagram, I draw or I use a GIF and people are more responsive to that than when I spend like three hours on the bus making an infographic that no one is going to read. So, yeah, or when I took a screenshot of something and they see that I was doing a, an important webinar and they just see the screenshot and that's everything for them. But also sometimes it's important to have some. Um, yep. Yeah, you got to <laughs> balance you. it. You're so right. You're so right. Thank so much. Thank you this. Mohammed, Mohammed. You? Hello. Hi. Yes, we can yes. hear you now. Uh, hi there. My question is, um, what is Instagram's main source of income and do big creators get earn a profit from the reels and posts they upload on, on the platform? Um, yeah, I mean, look, the main source of income is ads. That's, uh, that's how the whole meta business is. We, we sell ads um, on, on feed and such and uh, things like that. And then as for creators, I mean, you know, as you, as you heard, there's partnerships that are starting now to help creators get paid for their content. I'm not super familiar with how it works, but slowly but surely, that's what that's what IG is doing because we want to be a place where creators can can come and earn money for what it is they do. Thank you. Very nice question, Mohammed. <laughs> very interesting one. Thank you very much, uh, Magdalena. Please, the floor is yours. Hello. So one thing I'm very passionate about is the spread of false and real information, and my. Actual question is how can we stop the spread of false information? And in hand with that, how can we differentiate real from false information, especially in political senses? Yeah, that's a good question. So I do a lot of um, like, so part of my job is talking about, uh, you know, Instagram to politicians and governments. And another big part of it is working with, um, uh, working with media literacy groups in countries where there's about to be an election. So, for example, in France, we just did a campaign with a with a uh, news publisher there. Or in the United States, we work with uh, what we call the Pointer Institute, which is like an institute for media literacy and for fighting misinformation and fact checking. And so, there are a set of principles that are pretty much like agreed upon in, at these groups around the world in terms of like when you see a piece of news or when you see a piece of content on the internet that is, you know, that you're like, hmm, I don't know about that. Is that is that real? Is that too good to be true? There are, some, there are some agreed upon principles uh, that people talk about when it comes to like, how can you check if this thing is right or wrong, right? Like, how can I check myself before I share misinformation or disinformation? And, you know, I don't, I don't have them off by heart or know them off by heart, but a lot of them are just based on slow down and think before you share and think who published this, what is their goal, right? Is this too good to be true? What are other sources saying? Let me open up some browser tabs and check this, right? Like everything that you see can be checked. And in fact, probably tens of thousands of other people have already checked that piece of content that people are looking at, that you're looking at going, hmm, should I share this? Because sometimes when I'm looking at a thing and I'm like, that picture of the flying pig, is that real or fake? You know, you go to Google 
And you already have like, is that flying pig picture fake, like filled out on the search bar when you're trying to look for it. So, I mean, the most important thing is to stop and check personally. When you're talking about fighting misinformation and disinformation, you know, as, a, as an individual person trying to make a difference in the world, you know, there's a lot you can do when it comes to, when it comes to, you know, posting on your account, these tips, posting on your account, hey, this thing that's going viral is fake. I'm telling you it's fake. I looked it up. Anyone can look it up. There's a lot of strategies, but a lot of them are based, you know, pretty, pretty much so, like in that foundation of check before you share, because that's the most important thing. You know, if something is really designed to excite you and really designed to promote, uh, to provoke a big, big reaction in you, instead of that being your cue to reshare it, we got to all train ourselves for that to be the cue for us to check ourselves and be like, maybe I shouldn't post this. Maybe there's something that's, that's misinformation or disinformation here. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a very interesting question. Um, as far as I see, there are no further questions. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for your questions. And thank you very much, Dave, for answering them with very details, with all the, with the, with the patients and sharing all the information uh, with our dear young delegates. And I believe we can pass to, okay, I'm sorry, I see that. Okay, um, we will now pass to the activity uh, as always. Um, you all see on the left side, there is a QR code uh, that you can scan with your smartphones or you can join at slido.com and enter the six digit number there. This will lead you to the to our quiz today. Uh, sorry, Azar, after maybe we can get back to questions because I see we have two questions, one in the chat and uh, Katie also wants to ask something. So maybe we can do the quiz and then get back to some questions. So we yes, don't- Yes, guys, don't worry. We will, uh, we, we still have Dave with us. He is with us. He, he will be part Perfect. of our this I mean, game. I signed up for my own quiz. Yes, yes, so- But this uh, is gonna be a visual quiz. I'm gonna share my screen back once everyone joins. Okay, so we have, good, good. We have everyone joining. Um, and yes, don't worry guys, we will get to your questions after the quiz. So don't forget your questions. That's yeah. the most important thing. Write it down. I guess you, you raised your hands a little bit later, so we missed them and we already passed to the quiz, so. Okay. Nice We're doing well, well done. Can I join even though I know the answers? Is that is that fair? No, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Well, I, I guess I'm winning this. No, no, I'm not. I'm gonna leave. Actually, it. you can join, but only if you're gonna respond very slowly so that your times are not the best. Okay. Oh yes, I'm... there's also time for them here as well. Yeah. But Dave, I'm I'm not allowed to uh, guide the quizzes anymore because I give too many hints. So they have um, stopped a lot. I mean, this one is easy. Well, it's not that easy. It's not that but easy. But it's kind of easy. Well, I think we it, can go on, right? We have, I think, I think um, is it time? All right, I'm gonna share my screen. So watch your mobile devices. And I'm gonna do that. And there we go, you should see it quiz time. All right, question one, you see it. This country has the longest coastline in the world. That is, so every picture that I'm posting in this quiz is from the country's official tourism account on Instagram. Nice, that, that looks like a very interesting place. Very beautiful. It's a, it's a lovely place. Yeah. Um, Nina, as we cannot see the the time, time, could you please let us know when the time has expired? Yeah, let us know. Yeah, when we can reveal the answer. No cheating. Do also, do we have any guesses as well? I, <laughs> I, I, I think that I think we can now. Um, Real. All right. To, to the answer. Uh, 
This one was for me. Home country of Canada. Oh, 80, 86% of people got it. Nice. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Well done. All right. Next. Hmm? Well done to the kids. Yeah. Next question. This is the most biodiverse country in West Africa with over 1,200 animal species. Oh, wow. That is a very big amount of animal species. It's good. Uh -huh. It's good that they, 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 they can keep this biodiversity. It's very nice. You and the picture looks absolutely great. Fantastic. That's from one of their highlights. Use highlights on your stories, folks, on IG. And it's highlight dedicated to nature, as far as I can see. Exactly. Five, ready? Three. And the answer is? Cote d'Ivoire. Cote d'Ivoire, of course. Yeah, yeah, all right. How do people oh, do that one? I want to say that we played this quiz internally with the GYTS team, and, uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty difficult, some of them. We couldn't yeah. guess. So yeah, well, there was a tie between Cote d'Ivoire and Senegal. All right, here we go. Question three. This one, right, if you get this, you're good. This country has the highest number of UNESCO intangible goods of any country, like lace making and toy carving. That's a beautiful Ooh. reel from their official tourism account. I censored out the name. Yes, yes, very, very, very good decision. But I think, like, if I were Young delegate, just pay a little bit attention to the details and know a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit about this country, they can they can get it. I know it's one looks. participant who will recognize this. Yes. Oh yes. Hopefully, hopefully. Two per right. The answer, of course, is Croatia. Um, they do really, really good work with reels on their official tourism account. Um, oh, 52% of you got it. Great. I highly encourage you to check out the, uh, the Croatia tourism account. It's great. Next question. I found this. Okay. Look, I don't know if this is true. I found it on the internet, but, uh, you know, I, it, it sounds true. Okay. By some measurements, this country has the world's tallest women on average one, uh, one meter and 70. One meter and 70 world's tallest women. And that is same again from their official tourism account. <laughs> Dave, I think it's very unfair that, you know, you're showing us these gorgeous pictures and we're but, all sitting at home in front of wait, our screen. I, I messed up the answer. <laughs> uh, the, the, the right answer is in the options, but my reveal is wrong. So I'll, I'll correct it. <laughs> okay, don't, don't, don't worry about it. As, as yeah. long as you know the right answer, we're, yeah. we're good. No, the right answer that I found online. Okay, has everyone voted? All right. So please forgive me. I wrote Estonia. The answer is Latvia. Latvia is the answer. 43% tie between Netherlands and uh, Latvia. So that's good. Um, and I highly encourage you to visit Lat the Latvia tourism account. They also do tremendous work. And finally, kind of an easy one. You can find the tallest building in the world here. I know one person that will for sure know the answer. There we go. Yes, a, you, you kept the, the easiest one probably to the end to encourage. Mm -hmm. But I mean, definitely all these places, all these photos make us want to visit all these places as soon as possible. Hopefully. That's a screenshot oh. from a reel though. Really beautiful reel they did. You know, I talked about how reels don't have to be super fancy. Sometimes you can do a fancy reel, right? And it'll look nice, like a really cool highlight reel. Absolutely. Really depends yeah. on how much time you have, the message you're trying to convey, and so forth. All right. Answer is, of course, Dubai and the UAE. 100% of y'all got it. Well done, everyone. Very nice, guys. Well done. <laughs> cool. Thank that's you very that, much. That's for our quiz. Thank you, everyone. It's a pleasure. I know we have a few more questions. I'm happy to answer. Yes, well, I think we will first see the results. Yes, Nina? Oh, yeah. I already know. Okay. <laughs> we also want to know. We will with us. Oh, well done. Hey. Okay, Mohammed, who wanted to know how to earn money from Instagram. 
a Is very good grid? question, I might add. Very nice. Congratulations, Mohammed. Also, well done to David, Marta, Arek, and Dave. That was me. I don't count it. Oh. <laughs> I put it. Okay, okay. So, thank you very much, Dave, uh, for these questions, for the quiz. Um, we will... You, we will take advantage of the time that you have uh, dedicated to us, if you don't mind, with uh, the questions that we have left. Uh, I think one is from, yes, I see Ketsia's hand raised. Ketsia, floor is yours. Ketsia, are you here? Yeah. Okay. Okay, while we wait for Ketsia, I think she has some connection problems. Uh, I also saw in the chat that Tara had a question. Yeah, yeah Tara. Hand up as well. Yeah, go ahead, Tara. Uh, Tara, if you um, want to... Yeah, there we go. I think. Ah, there we We see you. You just have to unmute yourself and then... Please unmute yourself, Tara. You're on mute right now, darling. You have to unmute yourself. Tara, can you hear us? I think we have another. Can I yes, can you hear me? We hear you now, yeah. Yeah. I have my sound. Sorry, darling, do you mind repeating that again? We, we lost you there for a second. If you prefer, you can write it in the chat. You can write your question. Okay, in yeah, if, if you prefer, we can write in chat. And then I think Ketsia is now Hi, ready. Ketsia. Oh, question. Hi, Ketsia. Please go ahead. Uh, I, I don't speak English. I think I speak French. So, je peux poser ma question en français? Can I speak French? Bien sûr, je parle français aussi, ça va. Okay, go ah, ahead, merci, guys. Merci, vous parlez Donc, j'aimerais savoir um, comment, via les réseaux sociaux, intéresser plusieurs personnes mm -hmm. autour de moi à voir les, la chose de la même façon que moi. Ça veut dire que moi, je suis pas très active sur les réseaux sociaux, déjà. Je suis pas trop active sur mon Instagram, mm -hmm. euh, sur mon Facebook dans mon Snapchat, mais à chaque fois que j'ai au moins du temps, comment réussir à emmener plus de gens, plus de personnes à voir les choses de la même manière que moi Comment on fait par arriver à créer ce lien entre les autres utilisateurs sur les réseaux sociaux et ce que moi je fais hormis les heures de cours Voilà. So I think, I'll, I'll translate, I think the question is how can it be, how do, how can you make it so that when you're working on your, on your social media account, people see things like people how to get people to agree with you basically how to persuade people through social media to see things as you do is that correct i think um you can go ahead dave with the uh, yeah with this response as far as i understand yeah okay yeah okay well i mean look that's a that's a, a complicated question and I don't necessarily know the answer to that right like what you want to do when you're working on your social media account is just stay true to your mission at all times right and what you'll see sometimes in social media is people kind of wavering a little bit or changing their message or trying to figure out like as they say like which way the wind is blowing and then going there what you're going to do to have success is to stay true to who you are and to not necessarily change your message, but to change your approach to social media as social media evolves, right? So it's like, you know, back in the day, what we used to see a lot of was, you know, a really, really nice picture you post on Instagram and maybe put a filter and then people would click yeah. like, you know, we don't, that's not necessarily the way things go anymore, but your account is still going to be the same, that your account is still going to be who you are uh, and representing who you are. So I think it's not always necessarily about convincing people to see things your way or convincing people to see things, you know, as you want them to, as it is just being true to yourself and your followers and your account will come and your audience will find you. 
basically. Great, thank you very much. Uh, well, Abdullah was next. Um, Abdullah? Oh, no. Okay, who we have? Melina, the floor is yours. Me again, uh, sorry to take time over everything else. So my question is linked to the first one I asked. Um, so you were talking in the slides about authenticity. Um, I believe authentic uh, has a big impact on what people might take into consideration. And uh, as you were explaining before, sometimes it's better to use a big sentence that you can remember best. So my question is how much authenticity and let's say dose of special do you need to really have an effective impact and make people take your opinion into consideration? What was the word you said? How, your question is how much of the what do you need? Uh, authenticity, I say. Look, say again, you, you're cutting out a little bit. Uh, sorry, so authenticity and let's say those are special, you know. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's a good question. Your, your account should always be as authentic as possible, even if, so for, I'll give you a great example. In Canada, um, there's a province called British Columbia. And the British Columbia Ministry of Transport has an absolutely amazing social media presence, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. And it's literally just an account about like highways and bridges and traffic and road work. But they are so good because you can tell there is a real human being behind that account who just speaks like a normal person, right? So even if it, every single day, you don't need to do something super cool or you don't need to be a politician who goes live sitting at their kitchen table, baking dinner or making dinner like we see sometimes, right? Like you can just literally be an account about a highway, but it's the way you talk, right? And it's the way that you're able to just be normal as opposed to using that, for example, official tone of voice or people at a podium that's gonna make all the difference, in my opinion. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Melina. Um, Abdullah, who joined us later today. Hi, apologies for that. How's it going? You guys can hear me, right? Yes, yes, we can. Oh, we can hear you. Thanks for coming. And we're very happy to have you. We missed you. <laughs> I missed you too. So I'm not into activism that much, but I had this idea. Like, um, I just came into social media like a few weeks ago, so I can't really say anything about social media. But I, I've, I've wondered if we can like merge the metaverse with Instagram as in to bring out the voices of young activists. Does that make sense? Because I mean, in Metaverse, you can have like 3Ds and virtual reality. So having the voices of the youth speak in virtual reality is going to be more realistic and it brings up the experience when it comes to activism. Yeah, I mean, look, that's it. That's... That's a, a super broad question, um, but I agree with you, right? Like, for example, if you look at Instagram, when we talk about metaverse, what are we talking about on IG? So we're talking about, for example, filters that are, that are now getting more and more popular, more and more complex. Um, and when you talk about, quote unquote, the metaverse, you can see I've got the, I've got the Quest headset behind me, like a lot of us do as, we're, as we're, we're learning it, as we're putting it on, as we're understanding, like, what is the metaverse for? And I don't really, I don't know yet the answer to your question. Like, how can we use it? For activism, I think you know it's going to be, you know, the metaverse will be a place to do a lot of the things we do now in our regular social media experience, just sort of like augmented or a little bit more immersive. Uh, but I think it's a, it's a, there's a lot there in the future, and I agree with you that it's going to be a place. I just don't know exactly what shape it's going to take. Like when you walk through, for example, um, when you're using like the Meta Metaverse, like the Oculus Quest, when you're walking through, uh, for example, Horizon Worlds, right? Like you see, there's a world for anything that you could possibly imagine. And it reminds me of like how the internet was in 1995 when I first joined and not to date myself. But back in those days, you know, it was like you'd go on like one service and there'd be like all these different rooms, you know, and like that was the, what the internet was. And it was like a closed thing. Now you have all of the possibilities of the universe, you know, at your disposal, you can go anywhere you want. And so I think there's gonna be an audience for it, but I'm speculating. I notice we are at thank time. You. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, next one is Nazan. 
Am I saying it correctly? Yeah. Please correct me. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's correct. Yeah. Perfect. Last one, then I got to go. Yeah, uh, I got two questions, actually. Uh, first one is, does, mar does marketing nowadays depend on social media? And is it is, is mar traditional marketing easier than digital marketing? Uh, you know, I'm not a marketer, so I don't know. But like my answer will be like what it was when Rua asked the question before. Like, you know, social media has made it possible for literally anyone on a budget of zero to break through, right? And get their product noticed, get yeah. their account noticed, get their brand noticed. So beyond that, I don't have much expertise there, but I think at this point, I don't think a marketing plan in the world exists without a strong social media component, both yeah. organic and paid. Yeah, thank you. I really enjoyed your presentation as well. Thank you so yeah. much. Thanks. Okay, I do have to uh, unfortunately jump off now. Um, thank you so much, everyone. It's a real pleasure being here. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks for joining us. You were amazing, and I'm sure the kids had a wonderful time. Thanks, and guys. Thank, thank you so much. Very much. Take care. Bye. If, if you guys had uh, some questions that Dave, due to uh, time limitations, couldn't answer, you can send it later on to us, and we'll try to communicate to him. Uh, Tara, we saw your question. Uh, is and I can answer it maybe <laughs> because we have already asked this question. So maybe, maybe I can help Tara out with this. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So you can talk to Tara later with Tara later and uh, try, try to help her with that matter. Um, I think we have uh, next, uh, we, we are, we're going to finalize our uh, webinar soon, but I think next on the road is a, a video message uh from uh miss salam hamza kaid uh who is the founder and the president of uh, small world foundation which is an international ngo uh, that um, works in for educating the underprivileged children uh, throughout all over the world if we are ready yes we are I am honored to be invited to the first Global Youth Tourism Summit by the UNWTO to be a speaker and give a masterclass about peace and contributing to positive change, inspiring a culture of giving and creating impact. The summit will be taking place in Sorrento, Italy from the 27th to the 3rd of July. Throughout my career, I have raised awareness about peace, tolerance, acceptance, the importance of diversity, and we have supported thousands of underprivileged children in more than 38 countries worldwide, from the heart of Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. And now, as we are recovering from the pandemic, its mobility, and separation hindrance effects. It is the most pressing issue now more than ever to bring people together from all walks of life to appreciate the beauty of the diversity of cultures that comes with international tourism. I look forward to meeting the activists, the influencers and the youth and work together on promoting more harmony and peace. Thank you very much to Ms. Gaid. Um, as she mentioned, she will be um, hopefully joining us in uh, Sorrento. Uh, so you will be able to, you will have a chance to meet her as well. Um, next is, I'm going to give floor to Masha for her to uh, give you guys more information about one of your favorite parts, which is assignment, of course. Please, Masha. Okay, first of all, I want to hear, um, I hope you guys enjoyed everything. Um, as you know, we have a previous challenge still pending. So the um, list. Oh, sorry, everybody. I muted myself accidentally. Um, so we have the must challenge that you still have to complete. You all have received the forms. And if you haven't yet, please let us know so we can make sure you have the form. You upload your musts 
and then we have one week for the voting and then we have the winners. So that's one thing that's still pending. And for today, we have talked a lot about activism and I'm sure that you all are interested in many different fields, for instance, climate change and so on. So what we really like to ask you is to record yourself saying your name, the country that you're from and to kind of state what you're interested in. For instance, I stand for climate activism or I, I want to improve this matter or that matter, whatever, whatever it is that you guys are interested in, share it with us at gyts at unwto.org. And then we will post you on our social media pages and you would, of course, the engagement going and then we would have a winner as always with, with the, how much engagement you um, encourage from your friends. So that's the challenge. Um, Azer, um, we, have, we also shared the survey, yes, correct? Um, yes, before we, um, before we go to that, uh, no, I'm sorry, before we conclude our uh, webinar, we would like to once again, guys, ask you uh, to fill in the short survey, which should be available right now here. You should uh, see it on your screen soon. Uh, it's just simple questions about what do you, what do you think about today's webinar and your answers will uh, allow us to prepare better for upcoming activities. I believe you all should receive it right now. Um, as you will see, there is a general... Uh... Okay, that's nice questions. <laughs> uh, there is a general uh, evaluation. Uh, then there is your opinion, your opinion for parts and about the assignment. So I would kindly ask you to take a couple of minutes to fill in that. Uh, meanwhile, if you have um, any questions, not about Instagram, we, we, we cannot <laughs> answer about Meta or Instagram, me and Masha, unfortunately. But if you have any questions um, in general, uh, you can raise your hand. And also I have shared the, the survey to our, um, to our research as well. So that please, if you, if you haven't filled out yet, but you guys have encouraged a lot of engagement and the numbers are amazing, but please, if you haven't filled out yet, or if you have not shared it with your friends, please, please also make sure to fill it out, share it, encourage it. It's very, very important. It's, and it's going to be the main thing that we're going to talk in Sorrento also. So and, um, we highly encourage you to do it during this week because uh, uh, we will need to have these results, the responses as soon as possible so we can uh, start working on the research. Um, thank you very much for everyone who uh, filled the survey, current survey, the one on the Zoom that we had, the poll about uh, today's uh, webinar. And thank you uh, very much to everyone who's um, filled the global youth tourism survey. And once again, please make sure to share it. To if you haven't filled it yet, uh, please do so. Oh, and we have the results of the poll. Thank you very much, guys. We are happy to see that overall you enjoyed today's but, webinar. But besides that, how did you guys like it? Ooh. Interesting, right? How about let's do a round of like clapping or show some emojis you don't want to say. Give us some reactions. Let's do it like that. Amazing. Thank you, Elena. It's been quite interesting. The last part, I wasn't here the first part, but I'd say it's a thumbs up. But thank you for joining us. I know you had a lot to do, so thank you for joining. Oh, we have some clapping. Amazing. Thank you so much, everybody. And thanks everyone. Uh, if there are any questions, if there are none, I think. And on the specific guidelines on the assignment, we will of course share it with the follow-up email. And if you have any questions, you know how to contact me. And thank you so much. Thank you everyone. We will see you in five days, correct, Masha? Correct. So yes. on 10th yes. of May, and please make sure to register. I I'll keep sending reminders on WhatsApp as always. 
please yeah. please yeah. see you in five days for our next webinar uh, which will be actually about the climate topic Correct. Yes. Uh, I'm looking at Marsha to, to make sure that I'm not messing everything up. Yeah. Uh, so make sure to register and we will see you on 10th of May uh, at 2 p.m. Well, Madrid time. And uh, thank you very much, guys. See you. Thank you, guys. Everybody. It was great to see you. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day.